This is Derek Ware and this is the fourth video in a series of videos about practice and this video is about reinforcement, doing it over and over again. And here's the disclaimer about practice is that repetition in itself does not improve skill. Repetition only makes it permanent. So make sure that you are reinforcing perfection because if you reinforce a poor movement you're really working against yourself. All right, what you're looking at here is a video of uh, Mike Miller shooting practice. And this is really the definition of, of reinforcement. I'm going to press play here in a second. But first, just to summarize, if you've watched the other two videos and you have learned to practice in a very mental and precise way, you've also learned to reduce the speed and complexity of an activity in order to achieve perfection. Once you've done those things, well, now it is time to reinforce the movement. A problem that most of us make is we don't reinforce enough. You know, we, we learn a movement and we think, okay, I've learned it. I, I got it down. I don't have to practice it ever again. Well, the more and more you reinforce it, the more ingrained it becomes. And it needs to be to a point where you can do that movement without even thinking about it. Most of us tie our shoes without even thinking about it. Well, when you're teaching a child how to tie their shoes, you know, you may show them how to do it, and they may be able to do it even five times in a row with you there watching. But then a couple hours later, their shoe comes untied, and they have completely forgotten how they did it before. A, a good way to reinforce that would be to have a child tie and untie his shoe maybe 30 times. And once he's done that, then the, it becomes so ingrained that he will always remember it for the rest of his life. Mike Miller here knows that making shots in practice is one thing and it's a totally different thing making shots in a game. And so here when he's shooting he's not just going to try and hit a couple in a row and then think okay I have it this is good. Instead he's going to reinforce over and over and over and over again the correct shooting form. He's going to he's practicing making shots. Making them over and over again until when he gets in a game he can shoot and know it's going in without even thinking about it. Now next, let's take a look at what scientists are saying about reinforcement and practice. Off with ingredient number one, practice. Hours of practice. Which makes perfect evolutionary sense, really. I mean, we are built to learn. We're a learning machine. When we stress the wires of our brain, the skill circuits of our brain in a certain way, those skill circuits get stronger. And in order to make a permanent memory, you need to repeat something. All of which plays out so beautifully in cultures, rat brains, which is what Dr. Doug Field studies full time. His work is really the scientific underpinning of Dan Coyle's Talon Code theory because of this white stuff he studies that the rats and we have in our brains. Myelin. It's kind of an insulating material that wraps around the nerve pathways. Is an area of the brain containing white matter. Field discovered that this insulation actually grows each time an action is repeated. White matter continues to develop and myelin continues to form so it wraps that wire gives it more insulation and the signal moves much more fast and much more accurately. Faster and more smoothly. So if you repeat the same action a lot of times, if you're say Tiger Woods practicing the same golf stroke over and over, the myelin gets really thick and the brain cells start firing much more in sync and that makes all the difference. Imagine walking two miles per hour and having someone run by at 200 miles an hour. That's the difference we're talking about that myelin can make. So here's a picture. I have the nervous system drawn out for you, and it's really interesting. Your body communicates with itself through electrical impulses. Well, the question is, how strong are your electrical impulses? Well, if it's a new movement, something that you've never done before, the electrical impulse is not going to be very strong. So the more you practice something, the better the connection becomes because it becomes insulated by that myelin there. You're seeing this picture on the left. That's insulation. And that right there would be somebody who's a novice. It's just a couple layers. You can get up to 50 layers of insulation insulating that, that electrical impulse, which would be the equivalent of going from talking on the cell phone to somebody who was very quiet to standing in the same room as somebody and them yelling at you through a bullhorn. So an expert at something, let's say Michael Jordan, when he, when he tells his body to shoot a jump shot, 
it is not a quiet mumble. It is a screaming yell. And the body knows exactly what to do because he's practiced it so many times, over and over again. If the electrical impulse that fires to the muscle is very weak, the, the movement of the muscle is also going to be very weak. When you practice, you improve the electrical impulses to the muscles, which also makes the firing of the muscles much stronger. Myelin is a pretty amazing discovery, which leads to the next topic, which is maturation. I know that it can be frustrating to go to a practice session and practice one movement over and over again. Like let's say you're throwing a baseball, and by the end of the practice session you're no more accurate than you were at the beginning. But don't worry. It takes your brain hours to produce myelin, so it may not feel like, you're getting, like you got any better. But when you come to practice the next day, after your brain has had time to insulate the connection that you made the night before, you will be light years ahead of where you left off. It's like lifting weights. At the end of a workout session, you are no stronger than you were at the beginning, but you are stronger after your body has had time to adapt. So same goes for practicing a skill.